In the Mesh Settings tab, you can choose between the Auto Non-Uniform, Custom Non-Uniform, and Uniform Mesh Types. The Auto Non-Uniform option is the default option and recommended for most simulations. With this option, the mesh will automatically adapt based on the material properties, wavelength of interest, and desired accuracy level. The mesh accuracy slider can be set between 1 to 8, where 1 means that the mesh that is generated will have at least 6 mesh points per wavelength, 2 means 10 points per wavelength, and so on up to 34 points per wavelength using mesh accuracy 8. The mesh step size will be smaller in materials with higher refractive index since the effective wavelength in high index materials is smaller. The uniform mesh option simply allows you to specify uniform mesh step size along each direction. The mesh step can be specified either by specifying the number of mesh cells in that direction or the maximum mesh step size. The custom non-uniform mesh provides some alternate options for controlling the mesh. The automatic meshing option is much easier to use and therefore these custom options are rarely used. The time step settings include DT and the DT stability factor. The DT setting displays the time step. The DT stability factor setting is a multiplier that can be applied to reduce the time step. The default time step settings are typically sufficient, and using a smaller time step would increase the amount of time that it takes to run the simulation since it would mean that more steps need to be used. However, in some cases, if the simulation is unstable, a smaller time step is required. The minimum mesh step size is the setting which prevents an unreasonably small mesh step size from being generated. The mesh that is generated cannot have mesh step sizes below the limit set by the minimum mesh step size setting. This setting is here to prevent unreasonably small mesh step sizes that can cause the simulation to become slow or freeze. This setting rarely needs to be modified, unless you are working at a much longer wavelength and want to impose a larger minimum mesh step size. Finally, the mesh refinement method can also be set in the Mesh Settings tab. This setting controls how material interfaces are treated in the simulation. This can be especially important when simulating structures with curved surfaces. Since the mesh in FDTU solutions is rectangular, curved surfaces or surfaces angled with respect to the Cartesian axes will result in some mesh cells including multiple materials. The simplest refinement option is staircasing, in which the entire cell will be filled with whichever material occupies most of the volume of the mesh cell. However, using conformal meshing technology, it's possible to solve Maxwell's integral equations near structure boundaries to better represent the surface, effectively giving some amount of subcell accuracy. In other words, you can get similar accuracy using the conformal meshing method as you would by using the staircasing method with a finer simulation mesh. Conformal variant 0 is the default mesh refinement option, which applies the conformal meshing algorithm to all non-metal material interfaces. It's worth noting that the conformal meshing algorithm is more complex than a simple weighted average of the materials with the mesh cell volume. To apply conformal meshing to interfaces that involve metals, use the conformal variant 1 mesh refinement method. However, the conformal variant 1 mesh refinement method can lead to artificial modes at the surfaces of metals, especially if the simulation mesh is too coarse. Additional convergence testing will be required when using conformal variant 1. Other mesh refinement options are available, but they are not as robust and are typically only used if you're trying to reproduce published simulation results which used a particular mesh refinement method.